Namaste. I am Chukki Nanjundra Swami from Karnataka State Farmers Association, which is a farmers movement started in the year 1980 to fight for the rights of the farmers and the dignified life of farmers. A farmers movement which did not only address the issues of uh, the agrarian crisis, but also try to work on finding solutions for the very reasons of the crisis. So this is where we started working on agroecology and we started looking for different agroecological approaches. Mr. Subhash Palekar, who worked in the agricultural uh, department of the government of Maharashtra for uh, many years, and then he found out that that was not what the Indian agriculture required. The practices of ZBNF revolves around what Mr. Palekar calls as the four pillars of ZBNF. ZBNF has a major emphasis on the self-reliance and autonomy of the farm families. ZBNF is all about delinking farmers from external input and credit market by not purchasing anything from the external actors and particularly from big corporations. One is the conservation of biodiversity. By using local varieties of seeds, by diversifying your crops and by mulching, you're basically conserving your local biodiversity, and not only diversifying your farm, but also diversifying your own uh, food on your plate. So hence this can be uh, an answer to the uh, malnutrition. The other impact uh, we can think of is um, how the carbon gets fixed by using lots of trees on the farm. The, the, the carbon sinking happens on your farm and you don't need to have carbon credits for it for that and uh, so this this is an answer to climate change and uh, the net income goes up the farmers are basically not purchasing anything from outside and they have the knowledge of producing their own microbial cultures and they are they know how to have uh, uh, symbiotic uh, cropping patterns so Hence, you don't buy anything from outside. Whatever uh, comes from your farm, it, it's, a, it's a profit. And another very interesting factor what we have seen, what we have been seeing in uh, many uh, trainings conducted by Mr. Palakar, in which thousands of people take part, majority of them are young people. The Green Revolution has pushed the young people out of agriculture but agroecology is welcoming back young people to agriculture. Gradually, uh, when farmers started practicing it, when it started uh, coming in the media, the interest among the farming com community uh, started increasing. And uh, together with the farmers movement of Karnataka, many different organizations joined hands including the IT people from urban areas. So there were many uh, progressive religious institutions in Karnataka uh, gave their uh, premises and food for thousands of people. When I say thousands of people, it was, uh, I'm talking about uh, 6,000 people, 7,000 people for each training camp, which used to happen for at least a period of a week. What is interesting here is that all, this ha all these things happen voluntarily. Many volunteers took part in this. Many uh, professionals have given up their uh, professions and have joined this movement. Now this movement has uh, uh, you know, reached the, the level of uh, public policy. But at that time, it barely received any attention from university scientists or public policy makers or politicians in spite of our long, long, long effort. One of the first states uh, in India which started uh, zero budget natural farming as a public policy was Andhra Pradesh. Many other states can definitely learn from 
Andhra Pradesh, the experience of Andhra Pradesh on how to uh, revive the lives of the farmers and the rural communities uh, in a sustainable manner. The women uh, who are part of the self-help groups are the ones who are leading the trainings of uh, ZBNF. Unlike many other agricultural extension programs, ZBNF is not a technology transmission model. In Andhra Pradesh, uh, ZBNF is extended through uh, horizontal participatory social learning. There are master farmers and uh, these master farmers are training the other farmers. And this is a farmer to farmer uh, learning what they have adopted in Andhra Pradesh. The AP ZBNF program has consciously created a special space for the women farmers and particularly the landless people. And it has also uh, created an employment opportunity for the rural youth as technicians uh, in, uh, in the rural livelihood programs. And uh, we, what we have to uh, recognize in the APZBNF program is that most of the trainers are women who teach men, which you normally don't see in the rural Indian context. The state also has an initiative of uh, custom rental uh, shops for uh, small uh, machineries for the groups to rent to reduce uh, women uh, drudgery and uh, also to sell non-pesticide uh, uh, and cow-based uh, formulations. This has actually created uh, uh, opportunities for uh, rural women and rural youth to stay in the villages and uh, think of alternative livelihood uh, options. And uh, coming together of self-help groups and ZBNF uh, program together has actually not just uh, addressing the agrarian crisis in Andhra Pradesh, but also uh, uh, creating uh, many more opportunities uh, for uh, the depressed uh, rural communities. I wish agroecology will be seriously taken up by United Nations and uh, by all the member states and uh, agroecology is the only answer for all kinds of crises that uh, the humankind is going through. The climate change and uh, the food crisis and the crisis of malnutrition and uh, many other things. So we cannot go towards the model of corporate agriculture. We have to go towards the model of food sovereignty and food sovereignty can be achieved only through agroecology. Thank you again.